Welcome to Reader Syndicate 3.0, the next evolution of the look into counterculture that is canon. My name is Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds, and this started as a one-man mission for strain history and breeding science. Over time, it's evolved into something bigger, better, and more of a team effort. We will be joined by members of the Can Illuminati and other friends throughout the seasons to hear their takes on grow techniques, breeding science, strain history, and more. Our mission is to combat the narrative that corporate cannabis and seed posers are obfuscating for their own financial benefit. Welcome to the underground. We are the Syndicate. Hey everyone, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that over at riotseeds.com, we're about to drop some new uh, goat farm gear, some of the last of the Blue Dream uh, feminized hybrids, and we have the whole Blue and Cross lineup, Blue IX, some call it Blue 9, but it's Blue IX, Blue and Cross. Um, everything's half off right now, so talking $100 and $80 a pack. So be sure to go check that out at riotseeds.com, and we have some high and lonesome stuff still. We have some stuff from Matt Elite. Go check it out while it's still going. Um, the sale is probably going to end in about a week and a half, so keep your uh, keep your eyes peeled on the riotseeds.com. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's me, and I'm by myself, which I hate more than anyone even knows doing solo shows but um i haven't done a show on reversals in a while um i think it's kind of necessary a few of the reversal shows were kind of bullshit like i had a co-partner that had never reversed anything and decided to interject his opinion on uh the history of it how it's done etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's time to correct the record on some of that stuff also, I, I took a bunch of questions from the Discord. And if you're not a part of the Discord, go to our Patreon, join it, $5 a month, all the way up to $50 a month if you want um, special goodies, you know, every three months or so, unreleased stuff. And, uh, yeah, possibly one of these months I'll be doing, maybe, maybe be doing some reversal spray, at least in a small portion, so people can get an idea of a one-plant reversal. Um, with that said, uh, my history in reversals goes back... Since 2006, um, uh, Jimbo Hogg Gonzalez really taught me how to reverse uh, the creator of Hogs Breath. And along with him, I had a few other special mentors, which I will name, which are Ernesto from Buddha Seeds. Again, not big Buddha Seeds. Never interacted with Milo. Um, Buddha Seeds Spain. And another person that helped a lot, despite him not uh, being a big fan of reversals at the time, and I don't know that he is right now either, is Shanti Baba. Um, Shanti was a major part of me understanding the process, how to go about it, all the reasons why he hated it <laughs> and didn't love it. And uh, yeah, um, I took it from a different position at the time. Um, almost all seeds were regs, uh, unless made in Amsterdam. And it was looked down upon to do reversals and, you know, I'm a fucking villain. What are you going to do? Okay. So with that, I'll start off with the first question from Yahweh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Yahweh 7233. First question, and this is the, the first question I always get. STS versus colloidal silver. Um, colloidal sil silver is capable of re reversing some plants. It's not the best thing to use. Um, back in the day, there was a paper by Mohan Ram and Set. And this is the landmark paper, I, I believe it was late 70s, early 80s, where they were comparing different reversal types. And STS, uh, uh, which is silver nitrate sodium thiosulfate uh, combination, seemed to work best. It was, it was reliably you know, able to reverse plants. Back then, of course, there weren't as many polyhybrids or shitty uh, super Afghani dominant hybrids that they were trying to reverse. So... Things have definitely changed over the years. Um, second question is, how does gibberellic acid come into play? Now, GA3 only comes into play, and when I'll say gibberellic acid number three specifically, comes into play in, in a more advanced technique, and I wouldn't use it by itself, but I will bring it up later. Um, jasmonic acid for masculinized seeds. I know nothing about that. Um, you do use a different reversal agent for reversing a male to a female, I don't know anything about jasmonic acid or masculinized seeds for that for that matter. Um, Commander Cochran asks, 
I have a nice female plant that I would like to sell to get some seed stock. One, how many plants should I consider using? Um, great question. Um, if you've heard us talk on the show a lot about uh, reversals, it's a numbers game. It's, it's, a, it's always a numbers game. If you go in and you reverse one plant and think that's going to do it and you know knock up your whole room, odds are slim to none that you're not going to have a successful reversal. Um, I like to have it, you know, one to six. So if I have 36 plants, I want six plants I'm reversing um, and so on and so up. Um, that's the safe bet, but it's not always foolproof. It's definitely not always foolproof. There's plants that are very stubborn as uh, even CSI has talked about um, triangle, Skittles, Chem Dog D. Some of these are very hard to reverse and sometimes six plants won't be enough. Uh, second question from Commander Cochran. Uh, should I flip the donor one week, two weeks ahead of the receiver? Again, depends. If you're reversing hemp, you flip them at the same time. Hemp drops pollen so fast, and I don't know why. I really don't know why. A lot of time, maybe it's because people are popping hemp seed and just reversing the seed as opposed to clones of said uh, hemp seed. But in that case, it's it's you flip them at the same time. Um, if you are using something, say, Jeezel, right, um, I would stagger it in. I would start spraying, let's say, if I'm going to do six plants, two plants, two and a half weeks ahead, enter in two more plants, two weeks ahead, enter in two more plants, one and a half weeks ahead, and start there. And stagger them in and keep reversing them as you go. Um, the reason for that is it takes a lot longer for pollen to drop and and for receivers to receive and you want receivers to be receiving at the optimum time you do not want receivers to be receiving to be receiving after the hairs have died off because that kind of defeats the purpose uh dino grow asks is there a difference in seeds from a partially reversed and pollinating the same plant from pollinating another female plant of the same strain hold on a second let me go reread this is there a difference in seeds from a partially reversed and pollinate from a partially reversed and pollinating the same plant from pollinating another female plant of the same strain. Can I pollinate half a plant and consume the other half? Will it still be quality bud? So it sounds like they're trying to do half and half. I don't recommend it because one, you barely get any plants. You, barely, you don't get as many seeds in a reversal as you would a regular plant. Two, trying to control the pollen is a bitch. Um, yeah, I don't recommend doing any of that. Possible, not probable, um, not advisable. All right. Stinkbox says, when I reversed a male, it grew flowers all over, but in each flower it would throw a couple nanners. Finally, it pulled for dumping pollen. Are the sacks because I should have used more spray? Or because that's just the way the plant was? So when you reverse a, a male to produce female flowers. It will be making female flowers on a male plant. That is to say, it, it won't have the same bract structure, none of that. The reason you're reversing the plant isn't to pollinate it. The reason you're reversing the plant is to get an idea of what scents, the resin production, stuff like that. So when you actually go and use that plant in a real setting, not reversing it, you can see some of those traits pop through. That's the only reason people are doing that. Um, I don't understand why, uh, the seed question, I don't understand any of it at all. Um, let's see if you have a basic chemistry understanding, would a DIY recipe be fine? Or have you figured out something you spray that makes it better, more effective, etc.? Uh, you know, the DIY recipe of, um, who is it? It's been a while. Yeah. I don't fucking remember. The, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but yes. There, there is definitely more effective ways to do it than just using the DIY recipe. Yeah, there's a reason that that people modify it over time. Okay, uh, Ben Chicken, do you use gibberellic acid reversal spray? If so, do you find it helps elongate the male flower clusters? More like a true male, and how much GA3 do you use per 100 milliliters to achieve a good amount of elongation? So what we're talking about here is advanced, uh, advanced reversals. And I'll just say real quickly, it's because it's, these aren't really like ordered super well. Um, when using gibberellic acid number three, the only reason I would use it is if I noticed a hard cluster 
So when you reverse a plant, a female plant, you're going to get male parts on a female clustering, hard nugged plant. It doesn't look like a male that just drops pollen and leans all over and all that jazz. Um, it's just not how it works. So a lot of times when it gets too hard clustered, one of the tricks to use is 75 PPMs of jervelic acid number three. And it doesn't always work, but it has worked. Uh, it's a little advanced. A lot of people don't know how to make jervelic acid number three using alcohol, crushing it all down. It's not all water soluble as it claims. Um, I do believe somewhere in our Patreon discord, there is a recipe for making the jabrelic acid number three in the first place. Okay. Um, beginner question on reversals. Let's say I have two different cuts that I really like and want to make a cross. Does it matter which one I reverse just for this one cross or is it just luck of the draw edit? I should specify regarding traits, presuming both plants reverse pretty much the same like CSI did reversing chem D to chem 91 and then vice versa. I guess the question is, is there really any difference to the plant receiving the pollen versus the plant donating the pollen? Yes, there's a difference. Um, some have more of a difference. Some have less of a difference. Sometimes you'll see similar siblings popping up in both. Um, but it does matter. It does matter what is the receiver and which isn't. And usually the receiver um, is chosen by whichever plant is easiest to reverse, right? Like if Chem D is a bitch to reverse, then reverse Chem 91, obviously. That's that's That comes a lot into play of uh, why we choose what we do. Okay. Let's say I have plant A and plant B. Is there a noticeable difference in progeny between AB and BA? If A is male, B is female, is there a difference in B? Yes, we, we just answered this question. Um, is there any difference in general trend in traits? Just depends on what plants you're using. Uh, there is no hard, fast rule. Um, and you'll never... This is probably a question I get more than anything is like, is there a hard, fast rule on what's okay to reverse and what's okay not to reverse? And what's better? There's no hard, fast rule. Genetics line up the way they line up. It's like a zipper. You know, sometimes the zipper's off. <laughs> it's it's there's no hard fast rule what week do you start using reversal and what is the best dosing frequency um all that is in on my page where you can go buy my reversal spray it's on sale as much as it's ever been right now so go check that out riotseeds.com go find the reversal spray sections three different sizes and all that info is there if you don't know it's because you haven't got it you haven't bought it uh, complete newbie question. How much spray would be needed recommended for a small cell lookup style femme project with just a couple plants? Does the size of the plant matter when attempting a reversal? I mean, like I said, it's a numbers game. I don't recommend just like willy nilly trying to do it off, you know, three plants in a, in a solo cup. That's not really going to do too much for you. Um, does the size of the plant matter when attempting a reversal? Yes and no. Um, obviously the bigger the plant, the more the pollen if it reverses well. However, when you start spraying it, it almost 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 always halts any vertical growth. So keep that in mind too. Can you self one plant? Like if you sprayed one branch, could you use the seeds from the other branches or should you have separate cuts as receivers? I understand you usually spray the donor ahead of the receivers. Yeah, I don't recommend doing that. Um, definitely causes some issues. Again, you can't stagger that way, and staggering is necessary. Um, bong tokes for Jesus. Feed leading up to the spray after. Favorite size to do the reversal. Also, you go through so many plants. Uh, known keepers, what makes you say, holy shit, I got to keep this one forever. Um, feed leading up to the spray and after. So if you're doing reversals, I like to also include nitrogen throughout the whole feed just because like you're, you're making seeds, seeds need to do that. And if you're reversing, it's not going to hurt it at all. It's not like you're going to go smoke it and you're not going to go smoke the seed stuff after. I don't recommend it anyways. Um, also, you go through so many plants, no keepers. What makes you say, holy shit, I got to keep this one forever. How that fucker smokes, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's the determining factor. Uh, which plant was successful in reversing but extremely difficult to complete? won't reverse it again plants you haven't been able to reverse how many 
this before you throw in the towel. Have you ever reversed a long flowering plant? Um, successful in reversing, but extremely difficult to complete. Won't reverse it again. Clockwork Orange was very, very hard to, to reverse, but I did it a few times. But it, it, there were plenty of fails. I know uh, CSI would say the same about T Triangle Kush, Chem Dog D, and Skittles. All of the above. Um, plants you haven't been able to reverse. Uh, we did get the LA Affy to reverse once, but it was only like six seeds. Same with Cherry Pie, um, and, which is weird because you'd think Cherry Pie, Herm Bomb, might as well. Nah. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. Uh, how many times before you throw in the towel? I'm pretty stubborn. Um, there's not been many times where I've just been like, fuck that, I'm done with this. Because if I was trying to reverse it in the first place, there was a, a necessary need for it. Have you ever reversed a longer flowering plant? I did try with the Colombian black, but I didn't know what I was doing. I was trying to do it indoor, and it's a 26-week flowering plant. So, yeah, I have tried, did not succeed. Uh, how you feed plants reversal would be some good information. Extra nitrogen. There you go. Answered it yourself, Mr. Blue Grooves. Extra nitrogen. Feed it Feed it a full range. Is there any merit to hunting for female pollen donors in the same manner that I would males? To determine which female produces the best feminized offspring as opposed to reversing my favorite females for S1 feminized. You know, that's that's a good question. And yeah, they like they're, they're, that comes into play. Every, every single thing in there comes to play. Um, some plants are awesome on their own, but breed for shit. It's just how it goes. Uh, CCC, any protective equipment recommended when spraying? <laughs> I wish I would have known this a long time ago, but I didn't, so I didn't wear masks. I remember the taste of STS being kind of sweet because <laughs> it's been in my mouth so much. Uh, how would you go about trying to lock in traits such as nose and effect after stuffing a plant with only one known parent? In general, how much vigor and how much harder is it to self a plant multiple times? And do you tend to prefer back crossing over S2, S3 uh, to lock in traits at all? So I'm going to try to answer this question as best as I can um, using an example. So I have my, my blue bonnet stuff. Then I have the blue in-cross stuff, which is like really, really worked blue bonnet stuff a few generations. And right now I'm considering, do I reverse the blue in-cross because it's the best of the best, in my opinion? Or do I go pop some of the original F1 blue bonnet seeds that are left and try reversing that? Only because taking stuff in to a further self-generation is like hyper speed breeding and hyper speed, hyper speed inbreeding and uh, recessives come out from that. And blueberry already has plenty of issues with recessives. So I'm not sure if it would be working in a direction. They may all smell amazingly blueberry, but also be mutated and grow like slow shit. So yeah, I mean, there's different reasons for different things. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily choose like, back crossing over s2s or s3s i would just work it forward f1 f2 f3 f4 um i've done back crossing uh like even with the bonnet stuff i did a blue bonnet f2 i did a blue bonnet bx1 and i didn't do the s1 of that one yet um but that was more or less just to see what was the best case the back crossing or the the next the f2 filial generation and and as of right now they both seem pretty similar um, the trait was so uniform. The blueberry trait was so uniform from the jump that, yeah, right. Okay. So that gets to the questions. Now I was going to walk you guys through a typical reversal. So let's say you've got two tents, obviously one tent for your, your vegetative state, one massive tent for your reversals, right? Um, again, I like to do a one to six. So let's say you have six plants <laughs> and uh, you want to have one reversal plant. I still would go with like three just to be safe. Even though it is a one to six, I would still do three to six just to be, to be sure. Um, the idea is to keep your reversal plants extremely healthy. You don't want them going through any trouble, any pain. You don't want to burn up. You don't want any of that shit when you're doing this shit. Um, it would be nice and easier if you had a third tent 
where you could start these plants um, flowering before you start your main flowering cycle. Uh, I would like again, two and a half, two and a half weeks, introduce one, two weeks, introduce one, one and a half week, introduce one, then bring them into the whole tent that you've already started reversing. You start spraying the first second that you put them into flower cycle. All right. Now you'll slowly watch some grow balls about day 21. It takes about 21 days, 21 to 24. I usually say 21 to 24 days to start even seeing balls, knowing that this is working. So a lot of people don't have the patience and are like, I've been waiting two weeks and I don't see shit. It's not working. You wait 20, 21 to 24 days. It'll work. It always works. However, what doesn't always work is that it'll drop pollen. Uh, dropping pollen is more of a iffy kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's really it. You know, you just let them flower. Hope hope that some of them drop pollen. And when they do, fucking smack the shit out of it, you know, with a fucking stick. Hold it around the plants. Bring the plants in that are, that are the receivers. Make sure you get all their their stigma rubbed up in it. Pistols, whatever you call them rubbed up in it try to cover everything and see if uh, it takes reversing isn't that hard um it's just a lot of loss a lot of failure so be prepared for that and yeah um it's kind of a short episode but it's something i wanted to go over because i don't think i had a, a beginning a to z on how to do this properly a nice concise fast a to z on how to do it and hopefully some of you find interest in that. Um, again, we have our spray up for sale right now on riotseeds.com. I don't know how long it's going to be for sale, but fuck it. It'll be up. It'll be up for sale for a little bit. And uh, yeah, um, hopefully next week we should have an excellent episode. Um, going to try to work with Angus from The Real Seed Code to talk about land races. One of my favorite people on earth to talk to about land races um, and heirloom lines and what that means. He's a very thoughtful individual. And, uh, yeah, I, you can't just go learn genetics and then assume that you can learn everything there is to know about, uh, like heirlooms and land races is not how it's work. And it's not how it works unless you're a completely awesomely autistic human that can memorize everything, but it's not for me. So I like to refer to other sources, um, when it comes to that stuff and I know there's a high demand for it. So yeah, I guess, uh, with that said, Go check out Great Pie Seeds Australia. Go check out um, 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 LiftedSeeds.com. Um, we added some more of Pac's uh, Arcaded, I'm sorry, Blue Dream Arcaded Trainwreck on the site. Um, High and Lonesome always has new stuff up. Uh, we have the Blueberry Incross on sale right now, and it should be going off sale in about a week. And the spray is up for sale right now, as cheap as it's going to get. And it's cheaper than all of our competitors. So have at it. Go learn how to do this shit. Um, stop relying on clone onlys. Never forget, a clone only or an elite clone only is one person's selection from probably two to three fucking plants. It's all a joke. Quit chasing clones. It gets old. I did it myself, so I get it. But I don't know. It seems kind of fucky, you know? Oh, also, if any of you see the Santa Cruz screaming hand that was right here, Pop up in Ohio. It's been stolen. Had a bunch of shit stolen. My spray can guy was stolen over here. Um, there was a bunch of shit stolen the other day by some uppity bitch. So um, if any of you guys come across that, let me know. I would love to have it back. Um, you know, some people are just fucking thieves, and that's how it goes. Anyway, um, yeah, that was a fast one. Super fast. Um, oh, yeah. Riot Seeds Europe, Riot Seed Co. Europe. If you're in Europe, he's got your Riot Seed needs. And um, Gert by Seeds will also have a bunch of the Blue Ink Cross stuff soon. It's already on its way, so go check it out. Um, yeah, this was just a short one. I didn't want to skip a week. Um, I'm going away for a week-ish, but I'm bringing my laptop so I can edit if I need to uh, for the Real Seed Co. thing. And we'll do something. I don't know whether it's a live feed or something for next week. Um, apologize that it, that it was so, I don't know, quick. I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> it's something. Anyway, lots of love to all of you. 
and I'll be seeing you soon. Want to sit at the table with the syndicate? Check out our Patreon in our link tree or description below. Our merch site is officially live. We have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG, and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.